Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at Lawman 16. This is actually the closest brown dwarf to our solar system, and it's a brown dwarf that was officially discovered back in 2013, and might be worth learning about. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> Now what you're actually looking at is not Lumen 16. This is another brown dwarf in Space Engine and this one is actually completely procedurally generated in a system that I believe has quite a lot of other objects that we can take a look at. If we click on this button right here, that will enable both the orbits and various objects here. So we, we actually have quite a lot of planets here. We have uh, another major star and basically, it's a pretty interesting, pretty complex system. But we're not really talking about procedurally generated stuff. We're talking about actual stars, actual planets, and actual objects. And look at how complex this is. This is actually a multi-star system. Anyway, let's get out of here. Let's go back to Earth and then find Lawman 16. And here is a beautiful Earth. It's night side, at least. Now, we're going to be going to a distance of approximately 6.5 light years away from Earth. And this is just um, briefly farther away than the closest star to us, Proxima Centauri. Proxima Centauri is at a distance of about 4.2 light years away. And um, Loman 16 is actually the closest star uh, to Alpha Centauri and Proxima Centauri as well. So let's uh, go into the search engine here, and we're going to type Lawman16. Now, interestingly, uh, this is actually a name of a person, a name of an actual professor of astrobiology and astrophysics. And he discovered this object back in 2013 by looking at various data from um, the WISE analysis that was done in 2010-2011. And he was able to discover at least two objects that were both kind of unofficial assigned to him, but this one here, because it's the closest object to discover it, and we're about to reach it any second now, uh, was given the name Lawman, because his name is Kevin Lawman. He's actually a professor um, in the Pennsylvania State University. And uh, you can kind of see that it's not just one object, it's actually two objects. It's a dual brown dwarf system. These are basically holders of many records, including the closest brown dwarfs, the closest L-type and T-type brown dwarfs to our solar system. And they orbit around each other at a distance of about three astronomical units or three distances of Earth to the Sun. Um, and it takes them about 25 years to orbit around one another. So all in all, it's a pretty interesting system, but it's actually very difficult to see from Earth because they just so happen to actually be right in front of the galactic plane. And so if you're far enough from them, you won't even see them because they're basically going to be covered by all the other starlight coming from, uh, from our galaxy, from our, the Milky Way. Now, because these are two uh, considered to be brown dwarfs, they're not real stars. They actually have never reached the star uh, status because they never initiated the nuclear reaction on the inside. Uh, they're basically just about 4% the mass of Sun each. So if they were combined together, they could have created the Red Dwarf, similar to Proxima Centauri. But, but uh, individually, they are only have enough mass to be brown dwarfs. And so all in all, they actually are quite different from what you would imagine a star to be. They're basically like really, really, really massive gas giants that are relatively hot as well. So uh, the surface temperature on both of these is about 1200 to 1300 degrees Kelvin, which is about 1000 degrees Celsius. And uh, you can kind of see in a second, they're going to be look pretty interesting. So so here is the first one, Lomon 16A. And this particular object, um, just like a typical brown dwarf, looks like essentially a gas giant similar to Jupiter, just a little bit more hot and emitting a lot of infrared radiation because it's actually kind of hot on the inside. And um, these two objects are relatively similar looking, but they do have one slight difference, and I'll tell you about it in a few seconds. Uh, but basically, for the most part, this is what a typical brown dwarf looks like. Basically, it's a gas giant that has a constant um, aurora borealis, or basically the uh, northern lights and southern lights on both poles, uh, 
And this is from all of the magnetic field interaction and all of the um, charged particle interaction that it experiences. But if you were to go inside of it, it would just basically be a gas giant, similar to, uh, I guess in a sense, Jupiter, just a lot more massive. This is about 40 times more massive than Jupiter. And uh, Longman B is very close to this object and it looks very, very similar. They're practically identical, but you can see that it's slightly different because it's maybe a little bit cooler. But the actual lights here are a lot more prominent. And both of these actually have other names as well, and uh, you can kind of see them here. So one of the more common names is WISE1049, uh, also known as WISE-J1049, um, also known as irs z 10473 But all of these names are no longer really used because it's much easier to just say Lomon 16. And unofficially and pretty much officially this object and these two objects are actually known as Lomon 16AB and individually Lomon 16A or Lomon 16B. And so basically if you were to discover a star of a certain type and it would be the closest star to our solar system, traditionally it would be named after you even if you're still alive. There's a few stars that have already been named after people that discovered them and this is one such star. Uh, named after an astronomer or astrophysicist who's actually still around. He's still kicking and he's still teaching. So if you want to have a star named after you, you know, go and start looking at data from various telescopes and maybe you'll be lucky and have your next pick in naming a star. Now, one interesting difference between these two objects is that this, this one here, 16b, um, actually seems to have active clouds that change day to day. Um, both of these objects were actually observed for a very, very long time with the Hubble telescope. Uh, and um, 16a seemed to have similar sort of luminosity ev every day, but this here... Um, had unusual dark patches here and there, which indicate that there's actually active clouds pretty much throughout the entire atmospheric layer here. And this suggests that somehow, for some unknown reason, these two objects are a little bit different in terms of composition and possibly even the way they look. So this one seems to be more cloudy than, than its partner. And um, one important thing about these two objects is that we seem to have found some deviations in their orbits, suggesting that maybe there is actually planets around them. But further analysis show that there's nothing Jupiter-sized, there's nothing even Neptune-sized, which is about 17 masses of our Earth. But there might have terrestrial planets. So maybe those deviations were discovered because there is terrestrial planets similar to how TRAPPIST-1 has terrestrial planets as well. We won't really know for a very long time because we can't really see them, but it'd be interesting to analyze these a little bit more to discover if there's actually planets here as well that we might be able to visit. But obviously because these are brown dwarfs, they don't really produce enough heat to warm anything up, unless you're right next to it, and in which case you're probably going to experience some crazy tidal effects as well. So for all we know, both of these objects won't really have anything interesting to visit to land on or to live on. But nevertheless, it's interesting to study them because brown dwarfs are very unique, very unusual, and do give us an idea of how solar systems develop and how binary systems develop as well. Well, anyway, so that's really it for Lomond 16. It's a pretty cool system, very close to us. And unfortunately, you won't be able to see it because they're very dim unless you have a very powerful infrared telescope. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys learning through video games and who wants to learn more about space sciences as well, and come back here tomorrow to learn something else that you may have not known before. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye-bye.